Palaroga Shark Media. Hello and welcome to a special bonus episode of Palace Intrigue. In not so many words, the royals would like us to all cut it out. In a new statement, Kensington Palace said, We were very clear from the outset that the Princess of Wales was out until after Easter, and Kensington Palace would only be providing updates when something was significant. We were told once again, with that same phrasing, that Kate is doing well. In the news.co.uk, Diana Elsa pointed out, Consider first what a logistical feat keeping her concealed has been so far. It is now more than two months since Kate has been seen in public during which time the princess managed to make it from the Wales's country home in Norfolk to Windsor to a London hospital, then back to Windsor and later Norfolk, before Windsor again, and all without once being spotted. Most miraculously, the Prince of Wales managed to somehow squirrel his wife out of the Lux private clinic, where she had undergone abdominal surgery in January, despite half the world's available TV cameras being vigilantly stationed around the hospital. It would have made complete sense if Kensington Palace had, once the mother of three was feeling up to it, reverted to their pandemic model, reviving their format of putting out bubbly clips of her doing Zoom calls at home, all bright jumpers and neat ponytails. Doing this sort of video would firstly give the people the Kate fix they so badly need and want. Royalty might be the opiate of the masses, and secondly, it would have prevented this week's unhinged frenzy. Instead, the palace has chosen to act like the Soviet Ministry of Information circa 1964, terrified that the West will find out their real tractor production targets or corn yields. The Mirror's editor, Russell Myers, said on the Pod Save the King podcast, the king has gone a very different way to the Princess of Wales. He has been giving regular updates. We've seen him being driven in the state Bentley with the big windows waving to the crowds, then taking part in a video. He obviously feels well enough in himself to do those sorts of things. He is carrying on his mother's mantra, being seen to be believed. But that doesn't take away from the fact that we should respect Kate wanting to guard her privacy. It's a private medical matter, and she obviously had a lot to deal with, major surgery and taking that period of time to rest and recuperate. By saying that it is kind of unfortunate that they've kind of put a date on it, her return, because... By saying she's going to be back by Easter, if she needs a couple more weeks or she's not back, I think they've said after Easter. And if she's not back soon enough, after that, the rumor mill will start again, and I'm sure they are quite conscious of that. The very fact that they said personal reasons, it doesn't stop the rumor mill from exploding, and we've seen this recently with the chatter on social media about where is Kate? What is wrong with her? We haven't seen her in so long. That has gone into absolute overdrive. I think that William and Kate, we talk about them being public figures, we talk about what they are doing on certain issues. They are all afforded, or should be afforded, a right to privacy at certain junctures, and I think we should all recognize that, and that definitely goes for Prince William saying he had personal reasons. I don't think the palace would have wanted to give an update on Kate, and they've certainly said they don't want to get involved in a running commentary, but they probably thought people would start wondering whether it was to do with Kate, so by not saying it is or isn't, but by saying she is doing well, moves it on just enough. The Daily Beast quoted sources as saying it was very much business as usual for Prince William Thursday. Tom Sykes, writing for The Beast, shares that friends of William and other royal sources told The Daily Beast the palace would not be pressured by toxic speculation into changing their carefully planned approach of saying as little as possible about the princess recovery. One friend asked about the media commentary suggesting that the palace should be more open, such as an assertion in the Daily Mail that by saying nothing, the royals invite speculation, said the newspapers are always telling the family how to run their press operations. This time, surprise, surprise, they seem to think it would be a good idea for the royal family to give them more information about Kate. William isn't a big one for doing stuff because the Daily Mail says he should. If William has read any of this stuff, it will only make him more determined to stick to his guns and keep his wife out of the limelight while she recovers. The stuff people are writing is toxic. A former royal staffer said, anyone who expects the palace to suddenly start giving lengthy updates on Kate will be disappointed. The principal aim of her being sequestered is to guard her privacy. I'm sure the press hate it because it is working. There is a really, really small bubble of people who know exactly what is going on. We asked Insider Deep Crown about this, who said, the current whirlwind of spin upon spin is starting to feel like an episode of The X-Files. The truth is out there. Indeed, that it's buried under three layers of vague, doing well statements. It's as if they're scripting a narrative where the less said, the more speculated, leaving us all to wonder about the actual state of affairs. It's a curious strategy, one that invites more questions than it answers. Palace Intrigue will be right back. 
Daniela Ralph, writing for the BBC, looked ahead. When Catherine does return to public duty, the scrutiny will be intense. All eyes will be on her. How does she look? How does she seem? Does she appear any different? Her team are well aware of the interest there will be in that moment, so protecting her now has added importance. They will choose when and how we first see her in public again very carefully. Things are different over at Buckingham Palace as they manage King Charles III's cancer diagnosis and treatment. There, courtiers feel there is a need to see the monarch in action carrying out some of his duties. It is why we have seen pictures of the king with the Prime Minister going to church and reading Get Well cards. This is a king who is compromised at the moment, but can still do some of his regular work and the palace wants to show us that. There is not the same pressure on Catherine to go public. She is not the monarch. She does not have to reassure in the same way. Yes, there is a clamour for information, but so be it seems to be the mood. This is a princess who wants to keep things private. William didn't seem too stressed. He embarked on a solo trip to North Wales, visiting the city of Wrexham to explore the Turf Pub, renowned for its proximity to Wrexham AFC and its significant role within the local community. Highlighted in the popular series Welcome to Wrexham, the Turf holds the distinction of being the oldest pub located at a sports stadium worldwide. During his visit, William engaged with the pub staff, local community members and representatives from various charitable organisations, discussing the pub's vital contribution as a community hub and its support for local causes. His visit also covered the football club's remarkable transformation and growth over the past three years, following its acquisition by television actor Rob McElhenney and Hollywood star Ryan Reynolds. William had the opportunity to interact with McElhenney, who served drinks and shared a moment with Prince. However, Ryan Reynolds was unable to attend due to his commitments in the US, where he is currently editing the latest Deadpool movie. A royal insider noted, unfortunately, Ryan Reynolds is editing the new Deadpool movie in the US and sadly couldn't make it. He does, however, look forward to seeing the Prince later this year. We'll leave you with this thought. Richard Kay had quoted an anonymous long-standing courtier who said, this is not a crisis but added one key word. That word was yet. And there you have it. If you want to email us, our address is thepalaceintrigue at gmail.com. Please follow us on Apple or Spotify or your app of choice, and it will help you get these alerts for these breaking news stories. I'm Mark Francis. My thanks to John McDermott. This is Palace Intrigue. Good times. Good times.